What's going on, everybody? It's Big T back with another episode of MW3 Zombies. We are hopping right into it today. I am just going to use up all of our good stuff as I do almost every every episode now. I hope you're having a good um, Saturday. So far, we're back. Uh, we're back on the grind a little bit. I've I've been you know last couple days. <laughs> Negative. I've been negative on um, on COD. I'm trying. I'm really trying not to be. Although I've noticed I'm not the the only one. I've been searching around on the tube a little bit, and um, most zombie, you know, YouTubers. Um, there's a few who um, I've never really watched, um, but they seem like really positive people. Like um, what is his name? Mr. Waffles um, was one of them. Seems like just a super positive you know person good vibe person um even he from the videos I've, I've seen even he was like at his wits end about uh cod zombies and made a video just you know talking about how disappointed he was um about the whole season two thing i'm not gonna go into it in today's video i know i i started the intro like this but um not not even gonna not even gonna go into what I think about season two. We'll just see when we get it. It's uh, four days away. I think it's on Wednesday. So um, yeah, the season two update will drop and um, we'll we'll see what happens. It'll either be terrible like we think, or maybe there'll be some some hidden stuff that uh, we don't we don't know yet. But nothing nothing we can we can do about it. But I'm gonna hop on. I've uh, I've kind of recommitted to the to the Borealis grind. Um, in the meantime, so I'm using this Ram Ram 7 um, for the day and see see if I can get it leveled up. I uh, still can't even do the challenges for it, but I can do, you know, just um, the levels. Try to get it. I think it's level 6 right now, and I got to get it up to level 20, 27. So I got to shoot. I got to shoot a whole lot of a whole lot of zombies. But I hope y'all are having a good Saturday. I'm having a great Saturday. I just uh, had a lobster roll. Anytime I have a lobster roll, bro, I have like a sexual attraction to lobster, good lobster rolls, which is hard to find, honestly, in, in Texas. That's part of the reason why I want to live near the coast somewhere where I can get fresh lobster. I want to see them rip it out the ocean and dunk that motherfucker in a pot. A boiling water get some real fresh lobster rolls hard to find that in uh in texas but there's a spot um myself um my wife and my kid we all went to this uh place called legacy legacy hall it's like a food um I don't want to say like a cafeteria. It's not a cafeteria. It's just a, it's a food hall where they got a whole bunch of different vendors. And, um, one of them was a place called, what's it called? Dock Harbor or some shit. It didn't have the greatest reviews on Google. I think it had like 4.0 stars, but I got some anyway, cause I was really craving a lobster roll. It was pretty good. It wasn't the best I've ever had. The best lobster roll I ever had in Hawaii. I don't even remember what the place was called, but dude, we went. Almost a year ago, it was February last year. I think it was called Fat Fat Boys or Fat Fat something. Fat Cheeks. It might have been Fat Cheeks. Um, oh my God! Ridiculous, ridiculous lobster roll. It wasn't that good, but it um, it wasn't bad. I wasn't. I was not mad about it. But anyway, we got out of the house a little bit. The the weather's not terrible in Texas. I'm kind of not hating Texas right now. I'm not hating living in Texas. I don't know. I go back and forth. I never hated it, but like sometimes I just get I just get tired. I just get tired of it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I don't know. Today was nice. The sun came out it was like 65 degrees. Had my lobster roll, some chips. Alex got some some fried chicken from this place called Roots, which the uh, we watch a lot of food shows. That's pretty much all we watch on TV. Every night we get done with our day, we watch something. We've seen every every last fucking episode of Master Chef, Top Chef, uh, Guys Grocery Games, Tournament of Champions, Beat Bobby Flay. Um, I don't know, there's random shows with like Alex Cornishelli, um, 
It was all Master Chef Junior. Any cooking competition show there is, we've seen it all. But there's one um, chef that goes on those shows. Her name's Tiffany Derry, and she owns restaurants in Texas. We went. It's been a couple of years ago now, but her uh, kind of like flagship James Beard nominated restaurant is called uh, Roots Southern Table, which is close to where we live. It's really good. It's really good. Um, but she also owns a place in the Legacy Food Hall called Roots Chicken Shack, which is like a more casual, you know, they just got chicken sandwiches. Um, but she does duck, duck fat fried chicken, duck fat fried chicken. And um, she got the duck fat fried chicken tenders and then duck fat fries, too. And so I also ate some of hers, too. So I had good fried chicken, lobster rolls. It came with some Kool-Aid that was like, oh my God. It was that, that fucking summer 1997, you know, that fucking red packet of Kool-Aid with the powder that you rip open and you got a cup of sugar in the bottom of the fucking pitcher. It was that kind of Kool-Aid. It, uh, damn, it, it took me back. It really took me back. Oh shit. Oh wait, I still have mine. I thought I lost my ether blade. So that's all to say, my belly's full. And um feels nice. I've had three cups of coffee today. Double creamer. Fuck. And I'm letting nothing uh I'm letting nothing get me down. I'm excited it's the weekend. I am kind of excited for next week though. I put on uh, I put on some new trades that I haven't put on in a long time in the uh, the stock market for the last couple of years. I've been trading for like 10 years now and the first kind of half of my trading, um, I guess you can call it career. I was primarily focused on swing trading or like holding positions for, you know, days, weeks, months at a time because I was doing the optic stuff and like I didn't have time to just sit in front of my desk and day trade like I do now. But ever since the market kind of crashed with COVID, um, I expanded and uh, kind of switched strategies a little bit and focused primarily on intraday trading. But now that it's been, you know, four years since the market crashed, things have normalized to um, a greater extent. And so I put on some uh, some trades that um, are not just focused on shorting, pump and dump kind of small cap stocks. So I'm excited to see how it uh, to see how it plays out. It's not really a trade in itself, it's more a hedge. Not that you care, I'm gonna bore you with stock talk. I gotta talk more about stocks. It's just, it's my whole life, you know what I mean? It's all I do, is just trade. Um, which is not a good thing, but like, it's just, it's just what I, it's just what I do. It's 90% of my, of my days is just focus on trading. But I ended up shorting uh, NVIDIA stock or NVIDIA, whatever you, you wanna call it which is probably not the most popular trade, but that's part of the reason why I, I took it. <clears throat> um, I just, I think there's a, there's a very kind of special, you know, opportunity lining up that really doesn't come along um, super often. That's why I'm kind of excited for trading for the next, uh, next month. Cause it's just been years and years of intraday trading and it's gone really well, but like, I don't know, having something new and, and different should be interesting. But if you go back and look, I'm gonna talk to you about the trade, okay? If you go back and look, and I should preface this with saying like, I'm fully invested in stocks. Like I, I try to get across to everyone that like, if you're in your 20s, 30s, you got, you know, money you're not gonna need for the foreseeable future and you're trying to invest it, you should just be in stocks. And so I'm 100% invested in stocks, but every once in a while, you know, there, I think there's an opportunity to uh, kind of hedge, if you call it that, without having to sell. And so the uh, the way I've chosen to do that is by shorting NVIDIA. But the particular situation that's setting up 
It's uh, February 3rd. It's kind of, it's three or four different things coming together. One, if you go back and you look at what markets have done, um, really since I started trading in like 2013, almost every single time, there's been five or six of these instances, and you can probably go back and even study this uh, in like the, you know, early 2000s, late 90s too. Um, you know, anytime the market kind of sells off like we have in, you know, 2022, uh, 2023, and you come back and you reclaim a new high, almost without fail, the market fails, you know, at least for the foreseeable future. Not like a stock market crash, but you just, you undergo a correction. When you retake the highs, the market tends to correct. It happened, um, you know, 2014, 2015. It happened in... Um, 2018, 2019, it happened even when the market crashed with COVID and um, you you retook the kind of COVID highs, market corrected, you know, five, seven percent, sometimes a little bit more, close to 10 percent. Um, but for the last couple of weeks, we have that working for us. So the market's been sold off for, you know, the last 18 months, almost two years. And just recently, S&P, you guys probably seen... I don't know, headlines, if you follow it. The S&P, the NASDAQ, all the indices have retaken their old highs and made new all-time highs. So from a technical perspective, we're right around the moment coming into February where markets tend, for the last 10 years at least, to go through a brief correction period. And the markets closed really strong on, on Friday. Um, but secondly... You also look at, um, or I do, I look at sentiment. So there's a lot of different ways to think about it. But like investors' psychology about the market, how do they think about it? And a lot of people use that as a contrarian indicator. So if everybody, you know, is bullish on the market, then, you know, a uh, contrarian view is you would be bearish on the market. If everybody thinks it's going up and everybody's positioned for it to go up, then likely you know, it, it's to go down. That's a contrarian um, position. And one, and it, it's a slippery slope because some people will look at like, you know, oh, everybody on Twitter is bullish. And so I'm going to be bearish, but there's no real way to like quantify that data. Um, and so it depends like who you follow and, you know, is you, do you have a bias already in the market? And like, that's, you know, it's just, that's a slippery slope trying to look at what, individual people are saying um but there are certain like metrics that i was taught to look at when i was learning how to trade one of them is called the aaii sentiment survey um which measures they go out and they ask um you know market participants and and fund managers um what they feel about the direction of the stock market for the next six months and um that has always been not extremely accurate but pretty pretty accurate for me um using aii sentiment as a contrarian indicator so when aii is very bullish i tend to be a little bit more risk averse when aii is very bearish i tend to you know want to be long stocks and so um aii sentiment for the past week is extremely bullish which makes sense the market's been going up and ripping for the last three four months ever since october um and so we got those two things working for us. You know, technically speaking, the market has broken out to new all time highs. And at the same time, you know, where it normally corrects at the same time, positioning and sentiment is extremely bullish. Everybody's fucking, you know, hand clapping, which I get it. I've made a lot of money over the last three months. It's been great. And I still I'm always going to be invested in the stock market. But um we got those two things but then also i don't think a lot of people realize maybe they do um february is one of the worst months uh for the stock market in in general it's uh not quite as bad as the september october period when most markets uh market crashes have happened um but february um you know for all intents and purposes is not a good month um for the stock market and so those those three things um and then coupled with the fact that we've we've been on such a tear for the last like three or four months there's a lot of stocks sectors and even the market is pretty parabolic which is like 
that's my bread and butter, you know, kind of setup. That's those are the types of stocks that I trade all the time, parabolic shorts. And and so I, I really know how to like manage those trades and execute them, um, at least on an intraday basis. And so, you know, the combination of all of those things makes for a pretty compelling short opportunity, I think, in the short term. Um to at least hedge my portfolio. Like I said, I'm still 100% invested in stocks. I'm not like selling my fucking investments or anything, but um, would not surprise me at all over the course of the next six to eight weeks if the market comes in a little bit. And I chose NVIDIA mainly because it takes less money. You could go out and short the NASDAQ or, you know, choose some sort of instrument, but, um, you know, NVIDIA is just going to move more than like an index is. And so it requires less capital to put to work in order to, you know, essentially make the same, the same bet. Like if you, you know, typically if you're going to go out and hedge, you know, you would kind of use like a one-to-one, um, metric. So, you know, if you were long, say a hundred thousand dollars worth of the S and P, you would go out and short a hundred thousand dollars worth of whatever, and then adjust it for, you know, volatility and the beta of whatever you're, you're doing. Um, and so, I don't know. I think if the NASDAQ goes down, NVIDIA is going to go down more. And so we'll see what happens. But I've positioned in a way where if the market continues higher, I'll still make money on my long term investments. I'll just lose money on my hedge. And um, if markets go down, then I will make money on my hedge. And um, you know, I'll lose money temporarily on my investments, but I'm not selling them. Um, and so I'm just, I'm very intrigued. I haven't had like a swing setup like this where a lot of different factors come together to make for a compelling kind of trade in years. So I could be totally wrong. I don't know. None of this is financial advice. Don't go out and short the market or do some, don't do anything actually that I say. Um, but I'm just telling you what I did and I'm excited to see what next week brings with a swing trade. I got to be careful because when you're day trading, like timing is so important and it's important for swing trading too, but you know, it's just, it's two different time frames. Like one just moves much slower and like this idea, if it's going to work is liable to play out over the next six to eight weeks and not the next, you know, six to eight hours and so i kind of got to like turn my day trading brain off and um you know just sit and relax and um adjust based on based on what happens but we'll see it's a very it's a very interesting time very interesting time honestly the last four years insane for stocks like when I was I was first getting started for the first five or six years of my career, it was, uh, you know, there were fun moments and like little pockets of, you know, volatility and crazy things happening. But for the most part, um, you know, it was all pretty normal um, stuff. But ever since COVID, I mean, you had the COVID crash, you had just the most historic, which was crazy in itself. And then you had the most historic like frothiest bubble type of market I've ever seen, like 2020 and 2021, I was fucking locked in because there was just, there was so many trade opportunities. Um, and obviously uh, like with GameStop and AMC, have y'all seen that movie, Dumb Money? It's so good, man. It's so good because like, I just, I lived through it every day and just seeing it like portrayed in a movie is just like, I don't know. It's, I thought it was really good. Um, I should have just bought, but whatever. Um, but then you had that happen. And then uh, right after that, we went through the first real bear market I've ever seen, which was 2022 and 2023, which was, you know, really a pretty, uh, a pretty mild one. It only lasted like 15 months historically, you know. Historically, it was average. It was it was right in the middle of what bear markets typically look like, and I think a, a lot of people thought it was it was worse than that, but it really wasn't that that bad. Um, 
and now we're and now we're back and you got the ai boom and um you know nvidia is going crazy um just the whole ai industry facebook has gone nuts which that's probably at this point i think facebook is the biggest fumble of my career I've had two major fumbles. One was buying a Tesla car instead of the Tesla stock um, in 2016. That was a that was a multi seven figure um, mistake. That was the biggest mistake. But I I wouldn't even really consider that a mistake because I never bought the stock. With Facebook, I actually bought it. I bought some under a hundred dollars a share. I made a video about it on YouTube on my Green Wall Street channel. Um, when it crashed because they were spending so much money on the metaverse and they were just losing money. Everybody had completely given up. The stock was down like 80% or something. And my brain just thought like, there's no way this continues. Like there's no way Mark Zuckerberg just runs his company into the ground. He's one of the greatest CEOs of our generation. Um, there's no way he just lets his entire dynasty crumble. And that was my bet. And um, the bet was right. The bet was right. And I did make some money on it, but uh, I think I sold out of it at like 120 or 130. Which again, is like my trading brain. Because it's a good trade. You, know, you buy something at 90 something, you sell it at 130, it's a great trade. Stock's at like 485 right now though. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I really messed that one up. But worst case scenario, I could always just kill myself. If, um, like if it goes to a thousand or something. I could just do that. And then I don't gotta worry about it. Raw Ethereum diagram? No. Cool. Let's do that. Yeah, so that was, that was a huge fumble. Those two, probably, probably my biggest ones. I thought about shorting Facebook as a hedge, which I feel like could probably work too, but I think um, I think NVIDIA is going to be most closely correlated to what the NASDAQ does. So anyway. <gasps> I know y'all probably don't care about that shit, but I thought I would just share that with you. I like I like talking about it. I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you updated on what happens. Best case scenario, it works. We get a market correction. Mid-February, late February, early March. And then we also get some new Easter eggs and zombies. If we get those two things working, then I'll feel... I'll feel fantastic about things. But will it happen? I don't know. I am coming to the high threat zone. What is that? Does he have a juggernaut suit on or something? What the hell am I looking at? That's gotta be a juggernaut suit. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely what it was. <clears throat> Let's go help these fellas out, yeah? Is that the first time I've used my blade? Damn, son. Can I just get some bullets? Thank you. Ah, you missed. Spram 7's not the... It's not the worst gun I've ever used, but it certainly ain't the best. Be glad when I don't gotta use it anymore. I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> Went and did some optic content last week. I told the... The guys, Hector mainly, I wanted to be in some some more some more content. 
And uh, finally starting to get scheduled for some more content. I got three three pieces to do this week. And uh, we did something on... Oh, yeah, I'll join. Sure. We did something last week. I don't know if I could, like, talk about it because it hasn't been uploaded yet. Um, it was fun, though. Keep your eyes, keep your eyes peeled for, uh, on the Optic Channel. What are we doing here, boys? What do we got? Curious George, Blood Dragon, Jack Holiday. Are we waiting on something here? Help F5, please. Help, please. I mean, I got them grabbing no contracts. I'll get that spore contract. Oh, they'll fucking hate me if I just start grabbing random contracts and not doing what they want to do. Can they boot me? No, they can't boot me. You know what? Yeah, they're definitely running somewhere. I'm gonna grab this contract. If I can fucking get down there. Oh boy. Okay. I got it. They went to the buy station? Please don't chase me. There you go. Daily challenge completed. 25 hell hounds. I gotta be getting close to... 250 kills. <clears throat> God damn. I'm completely out of bullets. Am I dead? Maybe. Still got no PhD flopper? Fuck me. There we go. Leveling up. Let's go. Hey, I'm already level 11. I went from... I think I started at level 6. It's actually not as terrible as I thought it would be. Knowing that I'm not the... Like trying to level it as fast as humanly possible. What was that? What was that? Give me that. Got that one. Oh boy. Okay. Let's just throw these last few out. Something about that is so satisfying. Like, even when the only content I have right now for zombies is camo grinding. Something about just getting a whole train full of zombies. And just fucking blasting them all at the same time. Headshots. It makes me, it makes me feel, feel good inside. Oh god. Destroyed. Oh, there's a thing back there. I didn't even see that. Get it! What am I doing with this? I know, I know. I'm trying to reload. I would be so screwed without the golden armor blades. Should I grab any of that? 
Moving this way. I guess my team actually could have just canceled the contract. They do outnumber me. Didn't think about that. They didn't do it though. They're nice guys. <clears throat> I'm out of bullets again. Um, okay, let's drop this because we don't need it. Um, where'd the where'd the squad go? Oh, they're still here. Let's head on over to them. See what they want to get done. What else is going on in the world? I talked about my uh, my trading trading opportunity that's liable to blow up in my face. Um, what else? I talked about lobster rolls. Love a good love a good lobster roll. Fried chicken. Talked about fried chicken. Duck fat fried chicken. That's pretty much that's pretty much all I got. To be honest with you. In my world, that's the that's the biggest habit. Oh, optic content. I'm doing podcasts this week. We got a uh I think we have an optic hangout. I don't know what we're playing. The last one was like NBA 2K. Did a fun fun piece of content there. We're fully over COVID. Everybody in the house feels feels good, which is nice. My kid my kid didn't die. That was a that was a worry that I had for a little bit. But uh, everybody survived. We're good. She's nice and happy again. But other than that, I think that's. That's about all I've seen going on in the world. Oh, besides 21 Savage tried to scam Aiden Ross. Y'all saw that? That's crazy, bro. That is absolutely crazy. For those of you who haven't seen it, they were... Uh, I don't know what they were playing. I don't know if they were... What card game they were playing, but essentially they were betting hundreds of thousands of dollars on card games. Um, and somebody brought in scratched cards, which is a pretty, um, you know, obvious way to, to cheat, essentially. Um, you know, you put a, uh, you put a scratch on the card or some kind of mark on a card, and that way you know which card is which. And so whatever game they were playing, um, obviously there was, there were, all the face cards were marked. And, um... So I saw at least the caption said that 21 Savage had went down like 400 grand to Aiden Ross and then they brought out the cards, the marked cards and um, obviously he, he came back and he was up like 250 or, or something like that. But th this was all on live and you can go back and watch the video and you can... <laughs> You can see 21 Savage, bro. He's looking at the cards and they're on the table and he's fucking like this far away from the cards trying to see which ones are marked. Like, couldn't have made it more obvious and everybody in the chat was telling Aiden Ross to like, check the cards, check the cards. Like, clearly they're marked. And there's even instances in the video where you go back and you can see 21 Savage like signaling to, I guess, his friends um, to take some of the cards off the table. It was just is a whole whole deal now did 21 savage did he know i don't know or was it somebody in his you know his friend group or whatever that that brought the cards i he probably knew <laughs> judging by him looking like this fucking close at the cards he definitely knew but yeah i thought that was i thought that was funny Gotta stick to games that you can't cheat in. 2K. I used to bet NCAA football. Not well, though. I actually only bet on, like, one game. I remember it clearly, too. It was against D-Love. Back in high school, I, uh, I played a lot of fo NCAA football games. And I like to think I was good. I was good enough for like small town Mark Tree, Arkansas to be like what I thought 
the best player. I was the best player. I knew I played online. Like I knew all the glitches and how to, you know, do the wide receiver direct and nano blitz and like all this stuff that eventually, you know, people were doing in like Madden before it got patched. I know there's still ways to like cheese. I knew all the cheese. Okay. I knew how to get people wide open. Like, and, um, eventually, and I used to play my friends and I would just, I'd fucking dog them every time. 21, 21, zero game be over. But eventually word got around that I, I like to play. And there was somebody else in the school. He was a couple grades above me. His name was D D love. Um, he also played and he challenged me to a game of NCAA. This is like my first ever gaming competition moment. Um, he challenged me to a game for like, I think a hundred bucks. And I told my mom, what I was doing and she was like are you for real I was like yeah I'll play whatever um needless to say I fucking lost the game he also knew a lot of the glitches and cheese and he uh I remember him running if you played NCAA football back in the day which I might have to put some on the channel there's a new one coming out y'all know that new NCAA football holy fuck that's my game um we'll see how we'll see how good it is these guys want to go to the ether I'm down I've got an ether blade, whatever. Um, yeah, he he was just running halfback direct, no huddle. And if you if you played back in the day, you know that that's quite literally like the cheesiest strat you could do: no huddle, halfback direct every play. And uh, I just I just couldn't stop it. I just absolutely couldn't stop it. Like go for it on fourth down every time, like one of those types of games. And uh, I lost. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but I think he put up like 60 or 70 points and I might be at like 40 or 50. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my only experience with betting my own money on, on games like that. And, um, then COD came out and I fucking smoked him at that. <laughs> See, you're not beating me at that uh, except for that guy at the fucking GameStop midnight release I'll never forget that either it was like a couple weeks after I won the 2009 national championship team extravagant we beat Envious in the finals um, MW2 midnight release for GameStop they were hosting a tournament so I yeah I'll fucking go play played in it first rounded first rounded destroyed they had no idea who i was i was coming in thinking like ah they don't even know guy got a fucking care package on rust it was literally rust free for all you got a care package with a chopper gunner <laughs> and i just lost so i took my copy went home and i used that as fuel for the next six years of my life Oh, shit. I don't know why I hit L1 instead of R1. Why did I come here? I don't even know. Is this the normal ether? Okay, I think it is because we have 30 minutes to do stuff. Y'all want to do the ACV? God damn. Oh, I'm dead. Your your Do they know the... They know the missions, right? Yeah. Don't worry, boys. I got all of these on lock. Well, switch your gun, you fucking motherfucker. Oh, boy. 
Why are there gotta be so many fucking boss zombies on me? Oh, I'm dead. Oh shit, you got that one, okay. Oh, we did the other one too? Nice job. I really need PhD flower. Oh, we'll take that. Uh, brain rot? I like brain rot more. Y'all want me to grab the other one? I'll grab that shit. <clears throat> Try not to kill myself first. Ow. Activate that hoe. Yo! Dang! Where'd my teammate right here go? Oh, he went down. Didn't see that. I got a bomb. Did he? He self rest. Okay. Nice job with the Casimir boys. I feel like. Do we all four need to be here, or do they got that? Oh, actually, I want to. I want to grab the reward rift. I was gonna go get the other contract quick, but. We're in no rush. This guy's got the ray gun. I still can't believe how shit the ray gun is. Something about that ain't right. The ray gun should be the best gun. There is just... There's no better feeling than having a ray gun. Yeah, the fact that I, like, unlock the schematic and never use it. Sad. Taking that. Dog bone, boom. Uh, okay, last... Contract. Over here, I believe. The ACV. This will be a tough one. No VR 11. Well, fuck me. Oh, God. Do we have a sentry gun? Or we got nothing? I'm going to wait till the... Get over here before I call it in, though. I don't think, since we're in the normal ether, I don't think we have any uh, mega bombs that come. Oh, well, damn, you already called it. What the fuck? Okay. Here, I'm on with you. I'm on with you. Let's go. Banjo. There we go. Put the turret on. Yep. Don't worry about the front, just the back. They will not hurt you from the front while it's moving. Okay, now I'll worry about everywhere. Oh boy. I probably should have called that up front. Let's go. 85 is not bad. Oh shit, I'm out of. 
No fucking bullets right there? With that many people dead? Yeah, y'all are getting cooked. I'm just gonna get up here on top of this building and rain down hell. Running. Here they come, here they come. Jesus Christ! That's a lot of them. Let's just call that in the front. We're down to 68%. Gotta get them off. Oh shit. I'm completely out of bullets. There's some. Oh fuck! There is a mega! Yeah, that's not good. I can't, why can't I move? Oh, it's because I'm getting my ass beat. What are we at? 65? We can do this. Easy. Easy. 61. 58. Okay, this might be... Might be tight. It might be very tight. Oh boy. There's a mimic on the back. Mimic on the back. Get him, pickles. Yeah. Oh. Boy. There we go. We're just gonna call that in front. Bam. the decoys everything you got boys oh yeah oh let's go squad easy work it was way easier before people would we have done it in the elder either I don't think so I'm just gonna take that. Okay. Don't uh, don't need any of the other stuff, but that was that was a fun time, gentlemen. It's fantastic work out of y'all. I am gonna peace out of here. Okay. Probably uh, probably didn't get the most the most levels ever let's see where the gun where the gun got to though rift complete this is new that's a new screen i'm not used to okay so we got out of there yeah we got the refined ethereum crystal we got a dog bone i'll take it i was hoping i was gonna get a ether blade case or some more golden plates something actually useful but Okay, yeah, we went into that game level six on the Ram 7. Curious George wants to be my friend. That is, what a nice guy. I'm not going to accept it, but what a nice guy. Just invites me to his squad. We do well, and then he just sends me a friend request. He's like, hey, let's be friends. I don't need any more friends, though. I would I'm good, but thank you. Um, what the fuck was I gonna look at? Oh yeah, um, let's go to the gunsmith, customize camo. Oh, so we did the first, we actually got one of the camos done. All right, zombies, we got the, I might've done that one before, I don't know. 
250 hip fire kills we started working on. I wish I knew that was a challenge. I would have been hip firing more. Uh, get 100 kills shortly after using a field upgrade. Okay. Get 200 critical kills once it's uh, once it's level. Whatever. What level did I get it to? 14 out of 27. Dude, it's actually not that hard to level up guns. We went from 6 to 14 in one game, and I wasn't even efficiently doing it. I was just playing the game. Um, that's not that bad. Now you got to do it to like 31 different weapons, sure. But uh, I can at least see a little light at, uh, at the end of the tunnel. But anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of MW3 Zombies. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will catch you right back here tomorrow. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like if you didn't just refresh it and give it one more chance. And as always, guys, I don't really have a